Welcome to the data overview for Polk County Schools and Cedartown Middle School. My name is Jody Chandler and I'm going to be presenting the information today. So I am Jody Chandler and this will be my third year at Polk School District. I teach at Cedartown Middle School, go Bulldogs, but this is going to be my 16th year in teaching. I teach 7th grade language arts, but I have also taught science, reading, and family consumer science. Previously, I taught at Paulding County Schools, and um, three years ago, I moved to Polk County Schools, and I absolutely love the Polk School District. I'm always wanting to improve my practice and keep things fresh, so I think that by being a lifelong learner and continuing to try to improve my practice is the best way to do that. The purpose of this presentation is to provide you with some data that represents the strengths and weaknesses of our district and CMS. What are some areas that we need to improve upon? What are some things that we are doing well that has helped us improve? And what are some things we can continue to do to improve our school district? Polk County is a rural communi community and it only has around 41,000 residents for around 312 square miles. According to nces.ed.gov, Polk County School District has 7,749 students and has a total of 11 schools and around 540 teachers. 86% of students that attend Polk County Schools are economically disadvantaged. That's a huge number and that's going to be one of the key um, problems to our data is um, the amount of students that don't start school with what they need. And I think that's a huge factor. So for Cedartown Middle School, Cedartown Middle School is located at 1664 Sybil Brandon Parkway in the heart of Cedartown. There are 1,123 students and 69 teachers. Below is a chart of the student demographics. So there's around 434 Hispanic students. So we have a huge population of Hispanic students. Um, then we have uh, white students, 496, um, black, 132, two or more races, 58, and around three Asian students. Um, looking at our subgroups, um, the limited English proficient is around 16%, and that's, a, that's an increase from the year before. Um, we actually had to increase the amount of ESOL teachers that we had in our building as well. There are 85% of our students eligible for free or reduced meals. Now currently, all students receive free lunch, but students that qualify is 85%. That's a huge, huge amount of students that are economically disadvantaged who don't have the things that they need. And then we have 13% students with a disability. We're around 50-50 for male and female. And then again are the numbers down here, the percentages of students that are white, black, Hispanic, multiracial, and Asian. So looking at Polk School District data, so this is 2017 through 2019. And this is a single score. So this is the single score that the state gives to the district to kind of determine um, a, a grade point level, I suppose. And as you can see, in 2017, we were at 74.9%. And then each year it has declined. So 2018, 71.5. 2019, 65.8. Now, I did not arrive until the year 2020, so I'm not sure what practices we were doing back in 2017, but that's something we might want to look into, because what were we doing that worked so well then, and compared to our decline over time? And this was all pre-pandemic, so this does not have anything to do with our COVID learning loss. Um, the school district data for English language arts. So there was no individual information on the state website um, for 2017. So we're looking at 2018, 2019. As you can see, for our English beginning learners, um, it kind of increased from 2018 to 2019. 
our developing learners sort of stayed the same. Our proficient learners sort of declined from 2018 to 2019. And then our distinguished learners actually went up, so that was that was an improvement there. For math, um, it's very similar to the English data. So from 2018 to 2019, our beginning learners increased, our developing learners increased, but our proficient and distinguished learners decreased throughout from 2018 to 2019. For Cedartown Middle School data, so this is data for 2018, 2019, and 2021, since there is no data there for 2020. Um, for our beginning learners for our language arts, it increased. So from 2018, it increased to 2019, and then 2021, even more. Our developing learners stayed the same 2018, 2019, huge increase in 2021. And then we see our decline for proficient. It goes down from 2018, 2019, and then 2021, a huge dip. And same for distinguished learners. For math, very similar data. Um, our beginning learners actually went down a little bit here in 2021. Our developing learners increased, our proficient learners decreased, and then our distinguished learners also decreased. So this is um, my own personal um, classroom information that I pulled straight from SLDS, and this is 2021. And Keep in mind, I did have um, some gifted and advanced students, so that's why my numbers are a little bit more. Um, but overall, um, for Cedartown Middle School, um, we were very similar um, with our scores for language arts for our district. However, we were a little bit worse than the state, so that's an area of concern. And then looking at math, again, very similar with Cedartown Middle School and Polk County. But again, with the state, we were a little bit more off and a little bit worse than the state. So what does this data show? Um, we know that there was a great amount of learning loss that occurred during the COVID pandemic. Um, parents were not equipped with resources or understanding and knowledge to help their students and for some just not the discipline to um, make sure their students were getting what they need so there's some major gaps to fill because of that for a language um, this all revolves around reading or writing writing students must write about the things that they are reading not only to make sense of what they read but also to become better writers and this even carries over into math i know that a lot of times students have to write about um, how they got the answer that they were working on for math and they don't know how to do that so i think every single day reading and writing is a must not just for language arts but for all subject areas um, so what are some other factors? Again, like I've said before, poverty is a huge um, impact. So students don't have access to resources such as internet or books or um, even libraries. Um, and so that has a huge impact on how they can get things complete and, and done. And attitudes toward education. There are a lot of people in the community that don't value education and that needs to um, have a change that starts in the school and carries throughout the community. And then there are also huge communication barriers. We have a large population of Hispanic students who either um, can't speak a lot of English themselves or only speak English at school. So when you're trying to talk to parents, 
it can be um, a little bit of an issue. So what are some things that we are doing well? So we have added a literacy block that dedicates 30 minutes each day for students to read a book on their level. We started at the end of the year for students to work on um, their individual learning plan um, for IXL and homeroom. And we are meeting the needs of students through our doghouse. And our doghouse is like a, a pantry, um, a closet where students can go and get um, food or clothing, anything that they need, um, toiletries, toothbrushes, things like that. They can go in there and get whatever they need and take home. We also have our free lunch program and our backpack program that are helping students as well. Um, what are some things that we can improve upon? Um, first of all, meeting the students' needs. Students must feel cared for and loved before they can learn. So I think that some training for teachers to understand this. I think there um, some teachers still have a feeling that if they try to establish a relationship with a student, that the student won't respect them. So I think there are some things that need to um, happen to kind of train teachers of how to establish those boundaries and also how to connect to students as well. Social and emotional learning and character education for students, I think, is a huge um, and important factor. Students need to know how to um, take their emotions and what to do with them um, without acting out or, you know, having a mental breakdown. We need to give students those tools in order for them to learn how to cope with things. Um, we also need to offer all available resources. If students are assigned a Chromebook, um, but it does them no good to take home if they don't have internet. So working with the community and um, trying to help families who are lower income establish some internet connection, things like that, so that students can not only learn at school, but also learn at home. Um, students should be working on their individual learning plan starting on day one, and there should be continuous monitoring of the plan, maybe incentives and rewards attached for meeting certain benchmarks. So we use IXL, and students should be working on this daily, and I think that would help meet them where they're at and help fill in those gaps. So if they're working on a first grade math level, then they're going to be working on all of those elements in between first grade and seventh grade while continuing to learn the standards that they're supposed to be learning in seventh grade. Um, students should be have access to all different types of reading materials um, just so that they can find something that they enjoy reading even if it's a magazine. And promote lifelong learning and how learning can impact one's life. And I think we should also have more access to translators not only for students, but also for communication with parents. <clears throat> Looking ahead, we might not see the benefits of these changes immediately. It may take years for the benefits to, to actually, you know, see the fruits of. But as Michelle Obama once said, we are planting seeds of change, the fruit of which we might never see, and we had to be patient. And we have to be patient, but we still need to plant those seeds. We still need to try every day and to help those students. And to one day, maybe they will come back and, you know, um, have those conversations of how, you know, the seeds we planted back when they were in sixth grade has helped them to be successful later in their future. And I appreciate you listening today, and I hope that we can um, see the fruit of our seeds sooner than later. Thank you.